Welcome to the week one edition of my 2021 NFL Pick'em. Y'all smell that? That chill in the air? That's the smell of football, baby. We finally made it. I have missed you guys over the summer, but we are back. This is going to be my fourth season of this series, and I am primed like Joe Flacco in a contract year, ready to have my best season yet. Huge shout out to everybody that's been along for the ride and to those that are just jumping in right now. If you are new, welcome. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that you get a little ping every single time I upload, which is not always the most consistent, but during the NFL regular season, I will be here every single week picking these games, giving you my opinions, and running the best NFL pick and group on the internet. For week one, this episode is going to contain brief breakdowns for each team since we don't have a previous week to talk about. And make sure that you stay tuned to the end. I will show you my predictions for the full season standings along with a playoff bracket and who I think will be the Super Bowl champions. If you would like to join my pick and group, there's a link in the description and in the pinned comment. It's on ESPN once again because they just revamped their user interface and it looks pretty clean. So we're going to stick with ESPN. Looks like a couple of you guys have already join which is awesome i didn't even have to post it anywhere you guys are cool but yeah i've got big plans for 2021 including a weekly live stream which is what i'm pretty excited about i'm not sure which day of the week that i should do them on but the options are going to be tuesday wednesday or thursday somewhere between 10 a.m 4 p.m then maybe a bonus day of the week where we play video games and talk football but in the comments i want you to vote for which day of the week that you would prefer my weekly scheduled live stream to be i'm going to be having people from discord join we're going to be talking football if you are comfortable with it you can come on air and and speak to the group live but it should be pretty fun i'll talk more about this stuff at the end of the episode so let's dive right into week one. First up on thursday we've got the dallas cowboys at the tampa bay buccaneers and the nfl really sold out the cowboys this year they put them on hard knocks and the nfl kickoff game against the super bowl champs this is the equivalent of your favorite content creator using clickbait to get you into this season but the buccaneers are doing something that's never been done before returning all 22 starters from a super bowl winning roster usually half the team sells out and gets a fat payday in free agency which which is part of the reason that it makes it so hard for teams to repeat as Super Bowl champions these days. One of these teams in the NFC is really going to have to rise to be considered in the same class as the Buccaneers this year. But there are a handful of teams that I think could do it. And for the record, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. But this is the most excited that I've been about a team in a long time. Cowboys are stacked everywhere except for defensive tackle. And I'll argue with you on a live stream that that's a position that you can hide with a smart defensive coordinator. We'll have to see if that smart coordinator is Dan Quinn. But he's got the pieces and he's had the time for this version of his four. 3 defense to be installed and operated with a little bit more flavor than they have with Mike Nolan in that one year stint with a 3-4 base. As a football fan first, this game makes me as emotionally conflicted as anybody, but as someone who tries to cover the NFL as neutrally as possible, I want you to know up front that it's very easy for me not to show bias when picking the Cowboys. And why sometimes Cowboys fans are not happy with me in the comments because when doing pickums, it's easy to pick against my Cowboys because I win either way, right? All logic says that the Super Bowl champions should win this kickoff game 9 times out of 10. But if they don't, and I pick against them, then at least my team gets to be the ones that upset them in the trifecta of the NFL force-feeding us the Cowboys narrative early this season, just so that their fall from grace in the playoffs can be that much more captivating for everybody else. Same shit, different day. Sorry, my therapist tells me that I'm in an abusive relationship with my football team. I'm working on it. Anyways, for this one, I think it's close in the end, but Dak needs time to shake that rust and maybe an early mistake puts them behind. This Buccaneers defense will suffocate an offense when they are in catch-up mode. So I'm going to say the Buccaneers win 24-21. Moving on to the first NFL Sunday of the week, and first up we've got the Eagles at the Falcons. And remember once upon a time, Howie Roseman was dubbed a team building genius, but the same thing that allowed the Eagles to pull it all together for a Super Bowl run is the same thing that may ultimately be their demise. And it's the part of the game that Madden can't simulate. That's balancing the delicate egos in the locker room. Carson Wentz was already emasculated by Mr. BDN, and Rosen barely let Wentz recover from that before he cut him down again by using a second round pick on Jalen Hurts. Now that Wentz is is trying to recover some confidence with his biblical brethren in Indianapolis. Jalen Hurts is the guy in Philadelphia, but after the week 17 debacle where they pulled Hurts from a game that they could have won and he was trying to win, Hurts had to feel the same kind of mistrust that Wentz felt from this team. But going into 2021, it was clear that Jalen Hurts was the starter. Joe Flacco was a solid choice as a backup quarterback for Hurts because he's a Super Bowl winner. He's not going to divide the locker room with his presence or his performance. But no, that wasn't enough dysfunction. The Eagles had to trade for Gardner Minshew, who is at best a quality 
backup option, but has the swagger and charisma to make people wonder what he would offer at the first signs of adversity for Jalen Hurts. Long story short, quarterbacks, they've got delicate egos that should be wearing hypothetical red jerseys in real life just so people know to tread lightly around them. And the Eagles have been doing the exact opposite of that. I don't know if Jalen Hurts is a starting quarterback. Time will tell. He's got a good chance, but he deserved a better opportunity than he's being subjected to in Philly. This is actually my favorite slash least favorite landing place for Deshaun Watson. I think that it makes the most sense. Trading Jalen Hurts to Houston would give the Texans someone that could be brought along behind Tyrod Taylor if he's still there, assuming nobody punctures his lungs moving forward, and Texans offense wouldn't have to change that drastically. We'll talk about that more when it's the Houston Texans turn, because geez, these quarterback situations are complicated AF, and I feel like I'm trying to already slip NFL draft talk in there, and it's week one of the regular season. Let's start talking about the Falcons now. This is the beginning of the post Julio Jones era, and Matt Ryan has the weight of the offense squarely on his shoulders. Fortunately for him, the Falcons have been developing Calvin Ridley for this wide receiver one role eventually, and then they went and drafted everyone's favorite unicorn in the 2021 NFL draft in Kyle Pitts. But I think that the Falcons are going to need Arthur Smith to bring some of that creativity that we saw in Tennessee for this offense, because you got to do something to make up for the defense, which might be worse than it's been in recent memory, and that's been pretty bad. Dean Peace, this guy's got his hands full with this one. I didn't even address the Eagles' new head coach, Nick Sirianni. He is a character. He might be great behind the scenes, but in this matchup of new head coaches, I'm going to put my money on Arthur Smith leaning on Dean Pease and getting the Falcons ready at home. Falcons win this one 26-19. Next, we've got the Steelers at the Bills, and the Steelers are an interesting team for 2021. Remember, they started 11-0 last year, looked like one of the elite teams in the league, and then just completely fell off. Now, while Green Bay fans were excited and desperate for one more run with the team from Aaron Rodgers, Steelers fans were low-key annoyed that Big Ben held this team hostage and came back for another year. But hey, apparently, Ben Roethlisberger has been trying to transform his body this offseason so he can move a little more, but just in case that's all BS and he's been eating wings all offseason, and looks like he did in 2020, public service now for the kids out there a virtualized this is not the big ben that will likely be a hall of famer one day that guy was tough as nails and a lot of fun to play and one of the more clutch quarterbacks that i remember seeing but age or nutrition or effort or combination of all of the above have just stripped roethlisberger of what made him such a tough unique quarterback hopefully drafting Najee harris will take some of that pressure off of big ben get the steelers back to the days of steel curtain and hard nose running the football but if ben's out here checking out a runs to throw more quick slants and outs then this might be a wash of a season for the Steelers. The Bills will also go as far as their quarterback will take them, but their quarterback is a preseason MVP candidate. Josh Allen is like a young Big Ben with mobility of Aaron Rodgers, and the Stefan Diggs connection may have only scratched the surface last year in their first season together. Keeping on with this juiced up Big Ben comp, Diggs could be the Antonio Brown to Josh Allen, but it's the Bills running game that needs to see improvement if they're going to take the next step this year. Devin Singletary and Zach Moss are still young breakout candidates. I don't think that they are the issue. That falls more on the offensive line. They need more consistency from the healthy bodies, but they should be good in week one though. So I think the Bills win this one 27-23. Next, we've got the Jets at the Panthers. This is the legendary Sam Darnold Bowl. Just kidding. I am happy for Darnold that he can get this one out of the way early on, especially while the Jets scramble to fill the pass rush void left by prize free agent Carl Lawson. The Jets are trying to replace him with another Lawson pass rusher, but nobody really seems to want this guy after getting traded from the Dolphins to the Texans and now to the Jets all in one offseason. Personally, I like Sam Darnold. I think he's got a lot of untapped potential, and I hope that Darnold and Robbie Anderson torch the Jets secondary nothing against the Jets. I just love a good redemption story. And spoiler alert, the Jets are not going to have a great record by the end of the season, but I do think they are laying the groundwork to being a competitive squad in the upcoming years. Zach Wilson's legit. Take it from my boy Tony Romo. I still would have taken Justin Fields over him, but that's a debate for another day. And I think he's in a good place with Robert Sala bringing in a hard-nosed football mentality to the Jets after having a coach with the mental toughness of a soggy diaper. The roster turnover just isn't there yet. They probably will surprise a few good teams and could be more competitive than they have been, but the Panthers are essentially a year ahead of them in the rebuilding process. Whether or not Sam Darnold revives his career, he does give the Panthers a better chance to win than what they had in 2020. Their defense could also be greatly improved. After all, they did spend an entire draft class on defense in 2020. Now they've had a year to get their feet wet and truly learn the defense in a more traditional environment rather than the Zoom meeting defense so many teams had to run in 2020. I think the Panthers win this one 23 to 20. 
Moving on, we've got the Vikings at the Bengals. Now, I encourage Vikings fans to sit down for this. Maybe it's roster fatigue. Maybe I'm just a hater. But the Vikings are set up to be one of the biggest disappointments of the 2021 NFL season. It starts with Kirk Cousins, and it ends with Kirk Cousins. And I think the front office has finally realized and decided to take out an insurance policy in the third round of the draft in Kellen Mond. And if you think it's because of Irv Smith going down, it's not. I'm heartbroken for Irv Smith. He was one of the bright spots on this team for me. And I thought that he was going to be the safest of the breakout candidates. Hopefully Hopefully his sacrifice to the football gods will suffice and they will allow Dalvin Cook to stay healthy for 16 games, which could make my pessimistic outlook for them just completely irrelevant because Dalvin Cook's a beast, but I gotta play the odds here as long as Kirk Cousins is under center and I just don't see this Vikings roster getting significantly better. The lack of quarterback confidence though is a theme for this game, especially after Joe Burrow admitted to not feeling like himself as he recovers from that torn ACL last year. But when you're a quarterback who thrives off of the confidence that he displays in the pocket, it's concerning to admit that it's not there, but I'm not worried about him for some reason, or Jamar Chase for that matter. These are two guys that I anticipate will eventually find the rhythm at some point this season because we've seen it before and I think that we can see it again. But if Bengals fans thought that they were going to win the Super Bowl this year anyways, then they were probably delusional. From the Bengals, I just want to see a pulse this year, something to build on for the future or else I have to question if Zach Taylor is the best option to coach this team moving forward. For some reason, I am picking the Bengals to upset the Vikings, but I'm about as confident as Kirk Cousins on a Monday night football game on this one. Bengals win 28-26. Up next, we've got the 49ers at the Lions, and I'm not sure how this turned into a quarterback-themed show, but maybe it's because it's the most important position in all of football, and we don't know a lot about these teams, but we do know who should be starting at quarterback in Week 1. And to me, between Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance, it doesn't matter who the 49ers start at quarterback during the regular season. It's all about having at least one of them healthy late in the season for a playoff push, and it's obvious that Trey Lance is the quarterback of the future, right? You don't spend that much to trade up, but Jimmy Garoppolo can be the quarterback of right now, as long as he's upright. Now, I've never been a big Big believer of using two quarterbacks but Sean Payton makes me think that there's at least some potential there now I wouldn't use Trey Lance as recklessly as the Saints use Taysom Hill but some unique packages or even an entire drive could keep a defense off balance Kyle Shanahan is one of the most brilliant minds in football I expect him to find ways to make it work I'd even come out and give Trey Lance a scripted opening drive in a couple games just to mess with the defense however this could never happen if it wasn't for those dang sensitive quarterback egos you know also for the 49ers we're gonna have to see how the defense responds to Robert Salah's departure they've still got a very dynamic defensive line especially with Nick Bosa returning but I still think this is a Super Bowl caliber roster and one of the teams that could take that next step and eventually challenge the Buccaneers in the NFC and the Lions I'm actually not as low on them as it seems to be the consensus don't get it twisted I still have them finishing under 500 in my full season predictions but I think that they'll be more competitive than everyone else that has dismissed them thus far things Jared Goff in my opinion he needed to get off the west coast to feel the grind of life that everyone else has had to go through at some point right in fact he actually plays like a guy that never saw enough adversity and everything just kind of worked out the way it was supposed to without him ever overexerting himself. It's privileged, right? I was more excited this offseason about the Lions before seeing Penny Sewell struggle at right tackle like he has, but I think it's only a matter of time before he shakes the rust. Remember, he took a year off. And once he shakes that rust and this offensive line as a unit becomes a bunch of kneecap biters, ooh, when that happens, DeAndre Swift is going to eat. The goal needs to be to let Goff be a steady game manager. Might not help him keep his job beyond this season when his contract goes from 10 mil against the cap to 31 million per year but you never know 20 million is a lot to motivate a guy so the ball is in his court however this Lions new persona it might take a few games to really sink in so I'm gonna go with the better roster and more experienced coaching staff in this one 49ers win 34-17 Next up, we've got Jaguars versus Texans. Ooh, spicy. It has been a year to date, actually, since the Jaguars have won a football game. And since then, the quarterback fortune for these two teams has completely flip-flops. Now, I'm not going to get into the Deshaun Watson stuff because who knows what the truth is there. This is something that I'd be more willing to discuss on a live stream and share my opinion on what really went down when I can use more words and clarify what I'm trying to say in the moment. Same with the vaccines. I'm more than willing to discuss that with y'all on the live stream and with you guys on the air if you want. But when we can have a bad Back and forth about it. But yeah, that Trevor Lawrence chick, she's pretty good at football, right? I am concerned that the Jaguars offensive line might get him Joe Burrow this year, or that Urban Meyer might lose the locker room because he's running a college football program with grown men, but other than that, they should be fine. Texans though, they are going to be terrible. Like the original expansion Texans roster might be better than this one. And poor Tyrod Taylor, he deserved better than this after the Chargers team doctor punctured his lung moments before kickoff. I still can't believe that actually happened. Let's not waste too much time though on this dumpster fire cook-off. 
Remember how the Jaguars won their first game last year and then reeled off 15 losses in a row? Well, I think that the Texans can make similar week one magic happen while the Big Ten Jaguars adjust to the NFL rules. I'm just kidding. I couldn't help myself. But if the Texans win a game or two early in the season, I think it'll strictly be because so much has changed with the team in the last two years that they can catch people off guard because they just don't know what to expect. Texans win 16-13. I want to take a break real quick to do a little channel plug here. I have got big plans for 2021, including that weekly live stream. I have added some membership perks here on YouTube, like actually joining me on a live stream and talking football with me live through Discord, using your voice, no more keyboard warriors. Thinking about calling it the RTFC, the RT Football Club, but you know, that's a working title as long as the Washington football team doesn't take it. You know, I don't want to get in a legal battle with Dan Snyder, but the live streams are going to be the RT show. Real talk, real time, real tweet i don't know we're working on it but you know i'd never expect you guys just to all of a sudden start giving me money so i am keeping a window open especially for those of you that were notified of this video and actually watched it before the season i'm going to leave the discord open to anybody link will be in the description pinned comment so anybody that is in the discord will be able to set up and arrange a moment to come on these live streams with me so basically if you're an og member you get grandfathered in otherwise everybody's got to contribute and become a youtube member of the channel to do that there's be a little button it says join there are four options you can get in for a dollar two dollars five dollars ten dollars and i'll also be expanding this to patreon and if you've got your discord linked up with patreon or youtube as soon as you become a member or a patron you will automatically be a premium discord member i hope that's not too confusing if it is don't worry i'll be going over this stuff in my live stream this week and hopefully as the season goes on i'll be able to explain it a little bit more efficiently so let's get back to the mix seahawks at colts for the veterans of this channel I'll admit, I've been too high on the Seahawks over the last two seasons, but when you look back at the way that they performed in the first half of 2020, it's hard not to fall in love with their potential all over again. But every year, as Pete Carroll gets a little older, as the defense gets a little worse, and as Russell Wilson develops a little bit more of that NFL dad bod, well, that confidence wavers a little more and more. However, I've still got more confidence in the Seahawks offense and the Colts, and I am one of the ones that thinks that Carson Wentz has a chance to revive his career with his religious brother and Frank Reich. But this has been a tragic start to the second chapter of his career. He and Quentin Nelson had those obscure injury timetables where they could have missed five weeks or three months. Quentin Nelson, I'm okay with him. He can do what he wants, but I don't like Carson Wentz returning early from a foot injury of all things. I would rather just punt on the first few games, see what you have in Jacob Eason, and make sure that Carson Wentz is not only recovered, but rehabbed. Plus, Carson Wentz is not getting vaccinated, so I'm sure he's going to have to miss some games at some point because of contact tracing. The only benefit of these two scenarios is that if he misses 30% of the Colts' offensive snaps, it could reduce the compensation required for the trade with the Eagles. It would go from a first round pick to a second round pick so that is something that they should pay attention to moving forward i'm sure they already have and if your plan is to make sure that carson wentz doesn't hit 70 percent of the snaps maybe these are some escape routes so that they can maintain their poker face and not look guilty of being a little bit shady for future uh trade negotiations when i say it out loud it does seem a little bill belichickian but either way the colts defense is going to be their saving grace and will provide some stability down the stretch so that wentz and company can all get their feet underneath them i don't think that happens until mid-season though because the colts have a gauntlet of a first half schedule starting with week one i think the seahawks win this one 31 to 20. The Cardinals jumped all in on this season like we haven't seen a team do in a long time. J.J. Watt and A.J. Green are some of my favorite players from the last decade, but that's the thing. They're old, and it's highly unlikely that they regain that same all-pro form that they had in the last decade, but honestly, I don't think that they have to. DeAndre Hopkins has carried worse receiving cores than this in Houston, and Chandler Jones comes back to join a defense that's added a bunch of athletes to run around him, so if healthy, which that's literally an asterisk you could put next to any team, but, but this Cardinals roster is relying on quite a few that have had terrible injuries luck in recent years but if big if if healthy this cardinals team has the potential to be one of the best squads in the nfc problem is if the defense loses a couple pieces along that front seven the secondary is going to get exposed and it could be as early as this wide receiver duo in tennessee speaking of keeping guys healthy i want to see julio jones and aj brown go back and forth defying physics each week oh yeah and then this guy derrick henry just out here robbing people's souls if the titans can recover from the COVID outbreak that they picked up in tampa bay then they could be an explosive offense the defense has got to pull their weight this could once again be one of the best offenses in the afc but the pass rush has been a big problem for the titans they tried to address it the addition of bud dupree but he's coming off of a torn acl and honestly he was only a consistent pass rusher when tj watt was on the opposite side of him in pittsburgh but all in all i think that that covid outbreak will slow the titans down early on like it did to so many individual players last year and the cardinals are able to get the road victory here in week one cardinals win 26 17 
Chargers versus Washington football team. Wow, Justin Herbert. I mean, the Chargers, they got the best quarterback in the 2020 draft class, and I don't think that that's hyperbole. He's looking like a Madden creative player where you build this lanky gazelle with a cannon strapped to their shoulder and then slide all the key attributes up to 99. I mean, there's almost no way that he doesn't regress a little bit this year, and I don't think that's a hot take. He was the best rookie quarterback in NFL history last year. I think that there's going to be a way that he's improved as a player, yet doesn't produce to the same degree. There's also a new coaching staff with a defensive-minded head coach who might try to reel in offensive coordinator Joe Lombardi from trying to recreate his days in New Orleans with Drew Brees because that kind of game plan does not complement a defense and you're almost guaranteed to have a bottom half of the league ranks defense when your offense is putting up points like that. Achieving that balance is something that the Washington football team is also faced with this year but on the other side of the spectrum it's clear that they could have a top five defense once again. Can they get Ryan Fitzpatrick to play consistently over the course of an entire NFL season? He's usually solid for a four to five game stretch but uh, his stick gets a little stale or predictable after a few weeks. Chase Young has to be one of the favorites for defensive player of the year this year and this defensive line in Washington was built to give even the best of offensive lines trouble. They will have a chance to win every game this season if leaned on appropriately but once Fitzpatrick starts getting reckless the football team season could go down the drain. There's a very key matchup in this one and that'll be Chase Young versus rookie left tackle Rashawn Slater who opted out of 2020 so his first real football game in two years will be against a future all pro edge rusher. Could go wrong. I expect a smart calculated Fitzpatrick to start the season especially when he sees the physically blessed boy one across the field. I think that chip on his shoulder will be firmly placed for a hot start for the football team. Washington wins 20 to 14. Browns versus Chiefs. It's 2021 guys and the Browns is the Browns has new meaning. The man himself baby. The Browns is the Browns. <laughs> As a former Cleveland resident, I'm proud of the team for finally getting it right with the head coach. In five years, Vikings fans are going to be longing for Kevin Stefanski the way that Cowboys fans wish that they had kept Sean Payton, or the way that Washington, Atlanta, Cleveland, they all wish that they hadn't let Kyle Shanahan out of their facilities. Beating the Steelers in the playoffs exercised some demons for the Browns that I think could be the confidence booster that they need to pull it all together. Baker Mayfield is surrounded by talent, and I'm looking forward to seeing him with the LSU wide receiver duo once again, but this is a run-first offense now that the offensive line has been solidified. And now Browns defensive coordinator Joe Woods has got a plethora of options to deploy just absolutely crazy looks for opposing quarterbacks. Jadavian Clowney has been a disappointment for the teams that have taken a chance on him and the Browns are his fourth team in as many years. The difference here is that he had a full offseason with the Browns, a luxury that he didn't afford himself with the timing of the last few signings, and Miles Garrett. See with the Titans and the Seahawks, Clowney needed to be the alpha pass rusher, but the Browns, that's not even in question. Clowney just needs to be able to take advantage of all the attention that's paid to Miles Garrett. The secondary that has been waiting for the other LSU duo on this team to become regular contributors for what feels like ages, but believe it or not, Grant Delpit and Greedy Williams are still only 23 years old and would honestly be icing on the cake after the Browns solidified the secondary with free agent safety John Johnson III and first round pick cornerback Greg Newsom. I think one of the more underrated additions of this offseason will be Colts linebacker Anthony Walker. He's going to be the steady presence that they need in the middle of this defense. He's going to allow Taki Taki, Jeremiah Wusu koromoa and Mac to all be used to their best skill set. I don't know. It's weird feeling excited about the Browns, but you got to be excited for this team. They've got a lot of talent across the board. And then you've got the Chiefs, and the Chiefs are the Chiefs. They are the safest bet out there to win the Super Bowl this year and probably next year, and so on and so forth, really, until this offense gets broken up. But they fixed the offensive line this year, which cost them a game against the Bucks in the Super Bowl. But they even created a little bit of veteran depth by bringing Kyle Long out of retirement. However, he and the Doc are already dealing with injuries, but the Chiefs will be relying on their rookies, Creed Humphrey and Trey Smith, very early on. And then Lucas Niang out of TCU, he's essentially a rookie that could be a day one starter at right tackle. So these are three offensive line prospects that I was pretty high on in the last couple draft classes. Add them to the veteran leadership of Orlando Brown and Joe Thune, and the Chiefs could have a nice young group to grow together with, but that also means that they might face some growing pains with these young players. With Garrett and Clowney, it could be a tough week for the new unit to get their first start together, but how do you pick against Andy Reid coming off months of prep for this game? Chiefs win 35-28. Miami Dolphins versus the New England Patriots. The uncertainty of quarterback between these two teams makes me hella uncomfortable. And as a fan, I sympathize for you guys. Obviously, Patriots simplified theirs with the surprise release of Cam Newton. And I think we've seen the last of Cam as a team's number one quarterback. I think he probably waits until there is a serious injury for a talented team and then jumps in as their starting quarterback potentially. But the Deshaun Watson situation is affecting more than just the Texans locker room. I honestly feel bad for Tua Tungavailoa because other than letting these rumors fester, even 
even down to the way that they handled Xavier Howard this offseason, I think that the Dolphins as an organization have nailed this rebuild better than Bengal in a Madden simulation. In fact, after the open infatuation for Tua that the Dolphins ownership had leading up to the 2020 draft, it shocks me that they're even keeping the door open for a Watson trade. Tua might not have the same ceiling that Deshaun Watson has, but given the recent circumstances, I don't know why you make a trade for him right now. The team seems like they have the right system in place and everyone is buying in. Tua is set up for a breakout season and they've built a great offense around him. Even going as far as paying a ransom in the draft for his former Bama teammate, Jalen Waddle. So why potentially throw a season away for a quarterback with pending legal issues who hasn't taken a practice snap with your current roster? Watson might be the more headlining Miami kind of star, but that's not what they need right now. And it undermines the culture that Brian Flores is building. Maybe it's Watson's camp feeding these rumors. If that's the place that he wants to go, who knows? And all of this will probably settle down once the season starts, unless a move is actually made. But I do expect Tua and Mac Jones to be the starting quarterbacks in this game. And even with the distractions floating around, I am leading towards the Dolphins in this one because they need as many early divisional road games as possible. And Dolphins defense could be even better than the flashes of greatness that we saw from them in 2020. Dolphins win 17-13. Packers versus Saints. First off, thoughts and prayers to New Orleans and the people of Louisiana as they all recover from yet another hurricane. Sean Payton has said that the team might be away from their facilities for the entire first quarter of the season, and as a football team, that is going to be a tough scenario for them to overcome. This game against the Packers will be played in Jacksonville in the Jaguar Stadium, so hopefully as many Saints fans as possible can get there and still fill the stadium, because you know the Packers fans will be right there, ready to take those tickets from you guys. But moving on from the logistics of it all, Jameis Winston getting coached by Sean Payton for 16 games gets me pretty excited because Winston still has elite quarterback talent and a brain for the game of football but he has really suffered from a lack of impulse control and apparently he was half blind while playing for Tampa also so this fresh start is exactly what he needs the plan is falling into place this was always the scenario that he takes over for Breeze it is a shame that it's going to be under these circumstances and while missing Michael Thomas it doesn't give him that alpha target that he had like in Mike Evans but I think there's enough talent for this to still be a top offense in the league maybe having a guy like Alvin Kamara will tend to Winston to check it down a little bit more often while trying to stay within the game plan. Remember, he never really had a running back like this in Tampa Bay. Meanwhile, the Packers will be without left tackle David Bakhtiari for the first six games of the season as he recovers from that late ACL tear from last year. And losing a top three offensive tackle is going to hurt any offense, right? But it's better that he returned late than too early if the Packers are really in last ride mode with Aaron Rodgers. And I got to say, it is a unique situation to have a Hall of Fame quarterback that is almost assuredly going to be moving on after the season. If you were one of the ones that was worried that that he wasn't going to show up for the Packers this offseason. First off, oh, bless your sweet little heart. Secondly, I wish that I could have had this live stream schedule going so that I could have helped you see through the media coverage. But with Bakhtiari or not, I struggled to see the Packers replicating their 2020 performance. Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams were playing at a historic level, and historically, that's a tough pace to maintain. They don't have to be connecting at a 70% rate like they were last year, though, to still be successful. In fact, to avoid another dominant regular season ending with a quick playoff loss, this team needs to shift towards more balance with the running game complementing an improved defense. They took a very Madden-like approach to improving the defense this year though, and will be relying on a lot of in-house talent progressing in their development, such as Darnell Savage, Rashawn Gary, Kingsley Kiki, Jair Alexander could probably get even better, and even Kevin King. Yeah. The variables surrounding this matchup are overwhelmingly in favor of the Packers, from the Saints being displaced to the Jaguars grass field slowing down the speed. Even with all of that, I'm still picking the Saints, and you can cue the Packers hater comments early on in this one. I think the Saints can come together and surprise the Packers with an opportunistic offense that attacks these cornerbacks downfield. Saints win 35-30. Broncos versus Giants. Von Miller is back, guys, and I expect that he is going to make this absolutely stacked Broncos secondary look really good in what could be his final season with the Broncos. Drawing Daniel Jones and this dysfunctional Giants offense in the season opener was definitely a bro move by the NFL schedule makers. Obviously, these early season AFC NFC matchups make it so that it's not a crucial game for either team, but it will serve as a solid measuring stick for these two teams that both find themselves at a similar crossroads. They're running out of time to take that next step forward. Both teams have decent defenses to lean on, but if they can't get consistent production from the quarterback position, heads are going to fall. Teddy Two Clubs gets to start for the Broncos, and a lot of people were upset about that choice, but honestly, the Broncos are a defensive-oriented team, and a conservative quarterback like Bridgewater gives the Broncos their best chance to get the season off to a good start. And Drew Block probably needed a good humbling. Now, he gets to sit and watch an overly conservative quarterback and tweak his game to fall somewhere on the spectrum from where he was in 2020 to Teddy Two Gloves level. Let me rephrase that. You can't start Drew Lock week one, and when he struggles, then go to Teddy Bridgewater, only to get frustrated with his 
lack of a killer instinct, and then come back to Drew Locke. If the goal is to get Drew Locke ready to be a full-time starter, the best move is to give him the time behind a new veteran like most young quarterbacks need, and then allow him to be the spark for the Broncos offense after the first few weeks, first half of the season. Just pretend like this is his rookie year. Let him get another chance at instilling some confidence in you as you go down the stretch. And if he fails, hey, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson, they all might be options in 2022. As for the Giants, it's hard to see them overcoming Daniel Jones' shortcomings. Like with the Broncos quarterbacks, he is surrounded by weapons now, and it's just on him not to f*** it up. I know y'all put cuss words on the, um, <laughs> on the uh, show, so I gotta stop cussing because my mama gonna see it. I am, however, really concerned with Saquon Barkley's legs. When a tree trunk deflates like his right leg did, naturally it's gonna take a while for it to get back to full strength. But like, how does Saquon even run straight with his left leg so much bigger and stronger than his right? I figured he'd be running circles when I saw the size difference. Seriously though, rushing him back is not the way to go. He can't be the savior for Daniel Jones. If Daniel Jones can't get it done with these weapons, you just gotta cut your losses this offseason. And then maybe the Giants are players for one of those veteran quarterbacks on the market next year. I honestly think that the Broncos can capitalize on the Giants while they try to find a rhythm with these new wide receivers getting locked up by the Broncos secondary and the Broncos win 17 to 10. Bears versus Rams. Now, I'm not sure why we weren't getting the double header for Monday night. I felt like that kind of became a week one tradition, but I always say that I want two games every Monday night just to find out I'm actually too tired for the second half of the second game to have problems. But anyways, who doesn't want one of the main storylines on Sunday Night Football to be Andy Dalton? I mean, this guy, he was choking primetime games away before Kirk Cousins made it cool. And I am absolutely thrilled for the Bears and Bears fans to have finally landed the best quarterback prospect in team history. And I also understand why it's so hard to let Andy Dalton take these early Early season lumps because you want to see the future now but I think that this is the move that is best for Justin Fields you don't want Aaron Donald getting his hands on fields in his first start and then with the Bengals up in week two you might as well give Andy Dalton another start so he can try and get some revenge on his former team obviously unless he's absolutely dreadful or injured after those first two weeks go ahead and give him a third start against the Browns so Miles Garrett and Jadevian and Clowney don't split your new quarterback in two that leads us to week four against the Lions that would be the earliest ideal target for Justin Fields to make his first start it's at home against a weaker division rival and then week five against the Raiders week defense before a real challenging stretch of games against the Packers, Bucks, and 49ers. Also that gives the Bears offensive line about a month to gel. As for the Rams, they suffered one of the earliest casualties of the offseason in Cam Akers. They traded for Sonny Michel, but I'm afraid he nor Daryl Henderson will be able to offer the same dynamic ability that Akers was going to bring. The big difference for the Rams this year is obviously the swap at quarterback with Matthew Stafford coming to give them a little bit more juice in a downfield passing attack. And this will be Sean McVay's first time picking an NFL quarterback. So I'm interested to see how much his offense can improve. However, I am concerned with Stafford's inability to beat good teams while he was with the Lions. Since entering the league in 2009, Stafford is 8-67 and against teams that finished the season with a winning record, and he's never won a playoff game going 0-3. for I'm sorry, but his inability to win big games is a red flag for me. I know he hasn't always had the best teams in Detroit, but did have Megatron, one of, if not the most physically gifted wide receiver in NFL history, and they played together for a total of seven years. While Stafford's got all the physical tools that you look for in a quarterback, I just don't think he's the type of guy that elevates those around him. Fortunately, this Rams roster is only a few years removed from a Super Bowl contender, so you might not need to elevate the roster like that for them to still be one of the elite teams in the division. Hell, maybe the rest of the team can elevate him, and we can see what a truly elite version of Stafford would have looked like all along. The problem is that all four teams in the NFC West are capable of making the leap to challenge the Bucks in the NFC. I think the Rams, though, are going to come out early on this year with a well-crafted scheme to start the season that McVay and Stafford cooked up while they were on vacay with their wives. Rams win 24-14. Phew. All right, finally, on Monday Night Football, we've got the Ravens at the Raiders. The Ravens revamped this wide receiver group for Lamar Jackson yet again with Sammy Watkins and first-round rookie Rashad Bateman. I feel like you expect Sammy Watkins to be injured at some point in the season, right? That's been his MO, but Rashad Bateman is actually the one that's already on IR after groin surgery. Bateman can return as early as week four, and his skill set does translate well as a quick contributor to this offense, but he's definitely facing a physical uphill battle. The Ravens still have a solid veteran defense, but assuming some young players improve with experience, this might be one of the deepest units in the league. Linebacker Patrick Queen and safety Deshaun Elliott should be even better in their second year as starters. And I've been waiting for Tyus Bowser and Jalen Ferguson to really get their shot now that Matthew Judon is in New England. But you know, the Ravens have got one of the most thorough front offices in the league. They went and they reinforced their pass rush with Justin Houston and brought back Pernell McPhee. And I feel like they've got a backup at almost every level of that defense that could start for most NFL teams, except maybe safety. However, this Raiders defense, eh, not so much. They've got a bunch of draft reaches and used 
used or recycled parts in a division where Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert are going to be lighting up secondaries. Overall, it's hard to get a gauge on the Raiders and their 2021 potential. I haven't always agreed with their personnel moves, but some of them were worked out and when I least expected them to, like um, uh, that uh, that time they took Cleveland Furrow at four. Wait, no, he's getting outplayed by a fourth round pick. I meant um, the time they picked up John Brown in free agency. Or, oh, no, wait, they already cut him after paying him $3 million to be a training camp body. Uh, Colton Miller, there we go. That's probably the one move that I didn't agree with that actually has worked out well for them. But jokes aside, the Raiders did go into Kansas City last year and beat the Chiefs. So there's potential to take down Goliath. The question is, can they bring that energy for 18 weeks? I'm kind of worried that Derek Carr might have peaked last year with these silent road stadiums. We'll see if the lack of crowd noise really just relaxed him or if he's actually turned a corner in Gruden's system. His offensive line also went from one of the best in the league to having three out of five new starters. And one of those returning starters is an old injury prone Richie Incognito. I really liked Alex Otherwood as a football player in general, and he has found a home at right tackle for the Raiders. But Andre James, Denzel Good, yikes. Ravens win 33-23. And there you have it. The week one picks are in the books and I am definitely not in midseason form right now. So instead of dragging this video out even longer, I'm just going to throw up my final standings predictions and then the playoff bracket. I will be going over these in a lot more detail in my first live stream of the week, which will probably be Tuesday or Wednesday, unless you guys vote in the comments and overwhelmingly choose Thursday. I really do hope you guys will join me. Don't forget to click the link in the description or pin the comment to make sure that you join the ESPN Pick'em group. Make sure you join uh, the discord before it locks up for premium members or if you want to be one of the OG YouTube members here go ahead and hit that membership button there are a range of options where you can get in for cheap you can get in for an average price or you can be a big baller and uh, it goes to helping support this channel helping support me so that I can be here each and every week for you guys I wanted to wait until I made sure that I was gonna do this channel full-time before I really offered things in the membership program so what's available right now is literally the ground floor we will be expanding upon that as uh, things grow around here. But yeah, I think that's all of the channel updates. Um, as far as personally, I know the last time I left you guys was right before the NFL draft. My family and I were looking at jumping into this crazy real estate market that was going on, and it seemed pretty clear that we were going to be moving, but the real estate market got way too crazy for us. We reevaluated our own home and saw that we had a great opportunity to build an extension here. So when you check out the live stream, I will be in the same old man cave, but we have revamped things here. I have got it set up now to where it is primed and ready to go for a live stream at any given moment. So if something cool or ridiculous happens, you might get a notification that I have just spontaneously gone live so that we can talk about it. Also, I will be looking for people to interact with and talk with during these live streams. So the way that I'm going to be doing that is through Discord and their voice chat options. But yeah, all in all, I am psyched for this season. I hope you guys are ready. I need football back in my life more than you guys can even imagine. I would love to hear what you guys have been up to for the past few months. How's your summer been? Was it good? Was it bad? Was it hot? I know Virginia was miserable hot, so I am psyched for this cool weather to finally be here. It means that football season is in the air, and I want to thank you guys for joining me on this ride, man. This is a lot of fun. I'm glad to be back, and then stay tuned because I will see you all in the next video.